That's not me. That's just the acoustics in the room. <laughs> How are you guys? I have been looking so forward to this weekend um, with no idea what to expect, but um, just so excited to see as many of you as possible. And I cannot tell you, there are no words. We love you, Vic! We love you, Vic! There are no words to tell you how much I appreciate you guys. You know, I want to tell you something. I love you. Heart you. I love you, commoner. <laughs> Long live the poor. <laughs> you know what? I'm feeling very nostalgic right now. You know, somebody today at the panel, at the uh, autograph session asked me, um, what made you want to get into voice acting? And for one minute, suddenly, I had this flashback of 20 years ago, living here in Houston. You guys, I don't know if you know Woo! that. I lived in Jersey Village for 20 years. <laughs> Woo! And Houston is where my anime voice acting started. I, I did a little part for ADV Films, and I didn't really think anything would ever come of it. You know, it's kind of a weird thing. It's not something that you really think about setting out to do, especially not 20 years ago. <laughs> Maybe now, <laughs> sure, because it's grown so much, right? But 20 years ago, it didn't even occur to me that it would ever become anything more than just a kind of a one-off, interesting thing to do. And, um, I never expected any of this. I am so enormously grateful. Um, over the last year, when I've been doing panels like this, I have said something off the cuff that I did not realize might be so prophetic. <laughs> Oftentimes I've said, if this all ended tomorrow, I have been more blessed than I ever deserved. If nothing else ever came my way in this field, in this industry, I have already been so overwhelmingly blessed to know you, to interact with you, to play characters that I loved, that you laughed at or cried with or uh, went on a journey with. I never expected any of that. I never planned any of that. And so I am beyond grateful and humbled, actually. Guy downstairs was saying, what do you, he came up to my table during autographs. He's like, what do you, what do you think? What's, what word comes to your mind when you look at this big long line of people? And there's only one word that comes to my mind. Humility. Because I don't deserve it any, you know, I, I'm no different than anybody else. I'm no better, I'm no smarter, <laughs> you know, you, just like you, we do our best, you know, with what we have and you take it a day at a time and you, you hope for the best and you give it your all and um, I'm so enormously grateful for you guys. I hope to see you all throughout the weekend. I intend to die of exhaustion on Monday. <laughs> But I am all yours. <laughs> Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> now it just turned into a monster truck commercial. <laughs> Bigfoot, Grave Digger. Sunday, <laughs> Sunday. Houston Astrodome. Wait a minute, is <laughs> the Astrodome even still standing? No. Well, it's standing. <laughs> It's not operable. I looked out my window today. You don't mind if I come down here, do you? Woo! Nobody's going to attack me, are they? No. Please, I, I am a nice person, I promise. I looked out my window from my hotel room this morning, and I could see Minute Maid Park. <laughs> and when I lived here, I used to run camera for the Astros. Uh. 
So I spent a lot of time <laughs> at Minute Maid Park. And uh, it was really, again, nostalgia was the word that comes to my mind. It was so neat to, uh, you know, to, to see that and George R. Brown and, and I had so many wonderful memories. Did you guys know that I used to write jingles for commercials and ad agencies and stuff? You probably know some of my songs, some of my jingles, you just don't know that I wrote them. Here's one for you. Academy Sports and Outdoors. No way. The right stuff, the right price. Yeah, what? I wrote that years ago. <laughs> Woo! Um. <laughs> you know what? Those girls in the back are like, he's never going to see us. I see you. <laughs> Poor person. <laughs> and look what I have for you. Yeah! <laughs> and it's even a backpack. Usachan, Usachan. Nice. Ta-da. Oh my gosh, Usachan loves your blue hair. <laughs> Actually, it's more teal than blue. Okay. Who in here always has trouble telling time? Always loses. Do you always, do you always lose track of time, my friend? You just, what time is it? Oh my gosh, it's already that time? Is that you, my friend? Well, then you're in luck. Full Metal Alchemist! <laughs> what time is it? It's time to transmute mom. <laughs> too soon? It can't be too soon. It's been like 10 years. Come on. All right. Who in here, when I said, who likes Star Trek? Wait a minute. Put your hands down. I'm Batman. <laughs> Batman likes Star Trek. Who, when I said who likes Star Trek, you thought, I'm more of a Star Wars guy. <laughs> Take me home, you will. <laughs> you guys, this, this is crazy. By the way, I'm doing this all three of my panel days. So, wow. I mean, there's some really cool stuff in here. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> God bless us all, everyone. <laughs> Girl, Yay. What's your name? Oh. Luna. Luna? Oh my gosh, you know what that means? <laughs> moon. Yeah! Italiano moon. Bella Luna. Did your parents tell you that? Did your parents ever say Bella Luna? You know what that means? It means beautiful moon. Isn't that sweet? Oh, girl. So you like tea, right? I'm so glad. All right. You ready? This is... Do you like Full Metal Alchemist? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, no. She may have to die. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, yeah, I do, yeah. <laughs> what? Are you dead? Okay. <laughs> this is a gold-plated teacup oh. with Colonel Smarty Pants Mustang. <laughs> That's for you, but wait, what if you have a friend over? Well, what's better than a Roy Mustang teacup? <gasps> and Edward Elric! And here is your end. This Lucky. is Full Metal on the side. Lucky. So when your dad thinks you're old enough, watch Full Metal. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't watch this episode. <laughs> Give her a round of applause. <laughs> Maybe I should stop. Aww. Well, no, this is to make you come back tomorrow. <laughs> See, it's a strategy. I've employed a strategy. more presents, kiddo. <laughs> That's the kid that got the tea set. Can you believe she's like, I won't be here tomorrow. <laughs> you better be drinking out of that tea cup. That's what you better be doing tomorrow. <laughs> you better be watching Full Metal Alchemist episode one. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
We are here to celebrate the thing we love. Okay? No, not me. Anime. We are here to celebrate, right? I love Uncle Crow. You know what? You're a good kid. You're a good kid. I love Uncle Crow. He was fun. Do you like him? Of course, you have to call him Drunkle Crow, right? Drunkle Crow. Ruby. Ruby's a little punk. But I love her anyway. It was never about money. It's for the fans! It's for the fans! What? It was, it was for the joy of doing something creative that moved people. It was just, I would have done it for nothing. Don't tell any of the studios that. Because <laughs> they're probably like, oh my gosh, look how much money we wasted on this bozo. I have outstanding checks right now. Every time I get a check from some studio for uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure or whatever, Woo! I'm like, oh, that's right, I get paid for this. Like, I don't even remember because it was not about money and that's the point. It has to be about passion. We're gonna go a little deep, is that okay? Yeah. Lord help me. <laughs> we love you, Vic! Let me tell you how I feel. First of all, how do I feel? I feel blessed beyond words. Um, you guys, uh, it's been rough. It's been really rough, but you know what? And I want you to know something. I'm gonna say this right in front of you with freaking a hundred cameras rolling, Ty, look at them. They're everywhere. <laughs> There's no privacy here, am I right? Everything is right here in front of, for everybody to see. But I'm gonna say a couple of things, and I hope they come out right. I'm just a guy like everyone else. I'm no different than you. You ever screw up? You ever make a mistake? You ever say something you wish you could take back? Welcome to the world, right? That's the way it is. We... <laughs> you better not be pointing fingers at people. Because that they're always four pointing back at you. You ever hear that one before? Yep. <laughs> we all do the best we can. And I'm no different than that. I have spent my entire anime career wanting to encourage you guys, w wanting to be a positive impact on you. And in my interactions with you, maybe say something that helped you, or share something that got you through a difficult time. It has been the greatest joy of my life. And I know that there are tens of thousands of, of those people out there that I have spoken to and written back emails and interacted with and that's my greatest privilege of my career but i want to say something this is what i meant to say everybody who's ever been born on this planet everybody who's ever been born on this planet wants to feel valued Everybody yep. wants to feel like they matter. Everybody wants to feel like people are listening to them. Everybody wants to feel like they're worth something or that they, that they can make a difference or that they can be noticed. Here's the problem. What lengths are you willing to go to to get that? And therein lies the problem our world is in right now. I feel for people who want to be noticed. I feel for people who feel alone. You're in this room. You know I'm talking to you. You sit in your little room at home and you're like, man, nobody knows if I even exist. Nobody cares what I think about things. I have nothing to say of any importance. You know, I might as well be invisible. Tell me that there are not at least 200 people in this room that have felt that way. Yeah. You want in on a little secret? 
I'm one of you. I'm one of you. My parents divorced when I was, when I was nine. And my dad was never around. And I remember thinking, what's wrong with me? Why doesn't my dad give a crap about me? Why doesn't he ever come to anything I do? I work really hard, I'm not a bad kid, I don't get in trouble, I'm, you know? And I'm, I'm, I'm acting in these plays and, you know, what's wrong? Anybody identify? Now maybe yeah. not that one thing, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Something happens in your life that makes you think, what? Am I just worthless? You know? And I get the emails all the time from people who say they just feel like nobody cares, you know, whether they're around or not. And the unfortunate thing is that everybody wants to be noticed like that. At this moment, this young lady has my attention. And she's going to go home and she's going to remember when I stopped right now and looked at her and talked to her. And it's going to make her smile. You all have that power. You know that. To make other people smile. The problem is, everybody wants some kind of validation or attention. But the problem is that a lot of people go to extreme means to get it. So here's my encouragement to you, everyone, okay? Be noticed for doing something good. Wouldn't that be great? Be validated for doing something positive. Not for causing a, a storm, not for hurting people, not for ruining people. Be known for doing something good and something encouraging and something that lifts people up and something that makes people better. I mean, I want that for all of you. If I'm gone tomorrow, that word is still a good word for you. <laughs> it, no matter whatever happens to me no matter whatever happens to me I have spent 20 years interacting with you I have received thousands of emails and you know what else they're not even about anime they're emails about cutting themselves or feeling worthless and not wanting to keep going or parents having just divorced or a brother or sister who has a disease and is dying or loss or tragedy I've spent 20 years answering those emails and doing whatever I can to encourage you have the same power You don't have to be a voice actor. You have people in your circle that you go to school with, or you live in their neighborhood, or relatives and friends. You have people that you have the power to be a positive impact on them. So why don't you do that? Because you know what? The negative, hurtful garbage is the cheap, easy way out. Right. And I'm not even, I want you to hear me. I'm not talking about me. I'm trying to give you a word of encouragement. Um, don't be so caught up with how many people like your post that you don't think about what you're doing to somebody's life. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm not talking about me. There are hundreds of people out there <laughs> that deal with this. And probably some of you, right? Am I right? Yep. Some of you have people that trash you or give you a hard time. It's not about me, it's about the world. This is the world we're in now. But look around this room. 
we probably could do a lot of good if this many people decided to do good we could probably make quite an impact i think yes i hope you will do that i i hope you will do that don't do it for me don't do it for popularity or fame do it because it's right because you know it's right and you it feels good to be kind to people and thoughtful to people that's a dying breed in this world amen people have become so yeah i'm not sure when that happened that people are constantly looking for something to be offended about yep something to be outraged over <laughs> wow you know i understand being unhappy but you know there are plenty of good things you can put your, your efforts into. <laughs> and I hope that we will all do that. I'm working on it. Look, you guys, listen. I'm a work in progress. I have not arrived. You know what I mean? I am right there with you. We are all <laughs> a work in progress. You know what I mean? We're, we're doing the best we can. We're learning. We're growing, hopefully, and, and moving forward. Like Ed said, right? Got a good set of legs. Got to get up and use them. Move forward. I want that for you guys, more than anything. I am so enormously grateful for your kindness and your support for me. Hmm. And uh, I never expected any of this, uh, anything. <laughs> but I'm so grateful. You have no idea how grateful I am. Regardless, no matter what the future holds, I will remember this moment with you and the chance to, to connect with you and, and share my heart with you. Okay, that was really <laughs> deep and heavy, so let's talk about something fun. What's your question? You said earlier about the voice acting. You didn't expect it to blow up like this and everybody to want to be voice acting, but you know that you are one of the main big influencers. Yes. You, yes. you have done just so much. It's like, because it's, I don't know, there's so many words to describe how wonderful, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know, you're such a wonderful and such a faithful, like, person, and you're such a positive, and I'm sorry. Aww. You know, whenever people, Thank you, thank you. You know what, I don't know what your particular, I don't know what your particular faith is or what your particular religious beliefs are. You probably know what mine are. <laughs> in fact, I think I get in trouble sometimes because I'm a little too, well, no, I'm not too vocal, but because I'm open about it. But you know what, all I have to say is, as hard as this is to say, God's got me. I, I have to believe that, yes. you know, yeah. whatever, whatever, whatever happens, happens, right? And you just have to trust. Because you know what? At the end of the day, all of you, all of you, in your jobs, in your families, in your relationships, you only have so much control. Yep. The sooner you learn that you really don't have much control, the better off you will be. Because if you really think you can control everything, you're going to be you. Horribly <laughs> disappointed and very unhappy because you just can't. You can't control other people. You can't control circumstances. Yep. And so, you know, I just have to trust that, you know, let it go. Not the frozen, let it go. <laughs> um, but thank you for the kind words. You know, I have to tell you something funny. Um, when I was a little boy, and I loved Star Trek so much. William Shatner was everything to me. Like, he was my role model, right? Um, he was like the father figure. My dad was gone, right? There was Captain Kirk. I wanted to be like him. He had such an enormous impact on me, and I had the opportunity a few years ago to tell him so. He and I were at a convention in Dubai we were both signing autographs in Dubai, and we were at dinner one night on the Persian Gulf. And 
we're sitting at this round table and it's me and Bill and his wife Elizabeth and Gary, our manager, and our, like our guide who was helping us. And his wife, Bill's wife, started asking me questions about my Star Trek web series, which I have not talked about at all today, so you should be really proud. Because <laughs> usually I talk about it all the time. <laughs> Star Trek continues, check it out. Um, but I was, his wife asked me about it, and I had been to many events with Bill Shatner. We'd gone to dinner, we'd signed together, and I have never even spoken the words Star Trek. Because I didn't want him to immediately, you know, brand me as some kind of a, you know, oh, another one of those, right? <laughs> uh, can't you? Uh, <laughs> don't know what to say. <laughs> so, um, I never talked Star Trek with Bill. But we're sitting at this dinner, I love your shark, but we're sitting at this dinner, and that's really cute, and Bill's wife, Elizabeth, says, what's this Star Trek thing you're doing? <laughs> and I started telling her, not Bill. I'm talking literally across the table to Elizabeth, and I'm showing her, I pull up my phone, and I'm showing her pictures, and I'm like, you know, this, and I'm showing her pictures, and she's like, oh my gosh, you look just like Young Bill. No way! <laughs> <laughs> so here's me and her talking, and here's Bill Shatner, right? And he goes, let me see that. <laughs> oh and I God. give him my phone, and he goes, oh my God. <laughs> oh my, my God. God. And I leaned over and I put my arm around his shoulder and I said, this is all for you. <laughs> I said, you were so instrumental to me when I was young. And I made this series as a tribute, as a way to say thank you for what you gave me when I was little. Aww. And he put his arm around my shoulder and he was like, thank you. That's extraordinary. <laughs> Now, why do I tell you that story? Because about a year ago, the first person came up to my table in an autograph session and leaned over and said, I think you're going to know what I mean when I say this. You're my William Shatner. <laughs> and I, I almost started sobbing. I mean, when I was a little boy, I went to Star Trek conventions. And I stood on this side of the table and walked along and nice to, nice to meet you, Mr. Takei, right? George Takei, who played Sulu and, <laughs> and Dr. McCoy, Leonard D D Divorce Kelly and, and, and Scotty. Uh, I'm 12, 13, 14 year old little scrawny Vic Mignogna going to Star Trek conventions and meeting these people on this, being on this side of the table. And it's been so... What's the word? So powerful and humbling to find myself on this side of the table. I've often told people that God knew exactly what he was doing by not letting me get into the anime voice acting career until I was like 40. <laughs> because had I become some kind of a voice acting personality when I was 25 or 30, I would have been the biggest jerk you ever met. I would have been like, ooh, hero worship, right? Be like, it's all about me, it's all about me. I realized that I was given the opportunity to do something much bigger than me. And that is to try to make a positive impact on others. You know, as people get older, right? You start looking back and you're like, what can I do a value with my life? What can I do to sow into other people's lives that will, that will be a positive help to them or influence to them? And so that's, that's the position that I took. I'm about to confess something to you guys. You ready? All these cameras rolling. <laughs> what are you doing, Victor? What are you doing? 
are safe with us. <laughs> what? What do you say? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> Me and my 600 closest friends. When all the stuff started happening earlier this year, I started. I started thinking that maybe I got too big for my britches. I started thinking that maybe I was focusing too much on my celebrity. I'll tell you something. I've said this a couple of times and I'm going to say it again. When 10,000 people tell you you're awesome, you start to believe them. And that's dangerous. You follow me? Mm -hmm. You guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Can you imagine what it would be like for 50,000 people over the years to tell you how amazing and awesome you are? You start to, you start to think it's true. And it's not. Remember what I said a few minutes ago? I'm no different than you. I got some nice opportunities, I did my best with them, and you guys enjoyed the work, and I'm very grateful for that. But I'm no better than anybody else. I'm just a dumb human, trying to make my way, you know, trying to do the best I can. If someone show a spotlight on your life, would you like it? Are you proud of every single thing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Of course not. If you're more than 10 years old, you've probably done some dumb things. All of us have. The unfortunate thing is everything I say and do is on a hundred cameras. But with all of that affection and adoration, you start to think, hey, remember what I told you about being insecure and feeling valued? Remember that? About me, myself, feeling that way when I was younger? What do you think all of this encouragement does to someone like that. It's like a drug. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my gosh, I am important. Oh my gosh, people really love me. Maybe. But it's dangerous to let it go to your head. And when things started happening earlier this year, I started asking God, what am I supposed to learn here? I'm sure there's something to learn here. And what I think I heard was, you think it's all about you. You let all of that, I mean, it's a powerful aphrodisiac, you guys. It's a powerful temptation. When people are spot, how many of you, how many thousands of movies do we need to see and documentaries and biographies about rock stars, about normal average people who became starred and they, and they lost it. They got into drugs, right? They, they, they just spun off the deep end because how in the world do you handle that kind of constant, you know what I mean? So I, I think that maybe what God told me was that I was losing my focus. That my focus should be on him and trying to be the best I can for him and trying to be the best for you and encourage you. Yes. Right? And somewhere along the way, my focus got shifted a little bit. And I started maybe thinking it was, maybe it's a little bit about me. <laughs> no, it's not. Any voice that whispers that in your ear is a liar. It's not about you. It's about others. And what kind of a, a positive impact you can be on those around you. So, when you ask me that question, Caitlin. Caitlin, right? Thank goodness. Not losing my mind yet. I want to be that person. Maybe that's the beginning of it. 
Remember her question? What was her question? How do you stay humble, right? By wanting to be. I remember hearing one, a prayer, that reminds me of what I just said to you. And the prayer says, help me to remember, God, that the desire to please you pleases you. That the very desire to be more than you are, to be humble, to be kind, in and of itself is a step in the right direction. You have to want to be that. And if you want to be that, you're going to start being that. If you, you know what I mean? If, if you set out on that course, you can be that. I want that. I want that for me because... The whole pride thing is a real dead-end road. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be that person. I want to be the person God wants me to be. Whether it's in the anime industry, whether it's on a mission field, whether it's doing music, whether it's, I don't know. But I want to be who he wants me to be. And I didn't mean to turn this into a church service. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. Great! I'm so sorry. Please don't be offended, you guys. Please. Please don't go out of here and jump on social media and go, Vic Mignano is forcing his religion down us. <laughs> it's happened. It's happened. It's happened. <laughs> that kind of thing happens. Someone in here will go home and go, Oh, he started preaching. He started... You know, we want to talk about anime, and he just kept talking about God and religion. <laughs> hey guys, can I tell you all something? If any one of you are in this room right now, let me say something to you. I share that because I care about you. Woo! Do you understand? I don't share that to put you down. I share it because I want you to be better, and I want to be, I want to be able to share something of encouragement. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. You share something that's good. And I, this is important to me, and so I share it with you. Woo! You guys, thank you again, I said it again, for making this weekend so wonderful. Be voices for good. Be voices for positivity. Encourage other people, okay? Woo! I love you guys, I'll see you throughout the weekend.